Ah! Who are you and what do you want? Who I am is of importance to you. What I want is for you to review that. But I was about to review this. No. That one. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I'll do it. Okay, Lucas, I wanted to... Are you okay, man? Mm. Uh, I'm just gonna go now. <laughs> Hey there everybody, so today I decided of my own free will to review this set right here, Zane's Titan Mech Battle. Mm. Finally remember the name of the set. I did not look this up before the review. Okay, so starting off with our first figure, we have uh, what I'm pretty sure is Soul Archer. I don't really know the ghosts of this uh, sort of legacy wave, because these are legacy sets right here. They're not replicas, they're redesigns, reimaginings almost, of the original Ninjago stuff, like the source material. So honestly though, the ghosts are almost unrecognizable from their show counterparts. With the figure, it's very similar. Actually, it's, I'm pretty sure it's completely identical to some other ghost figures, because if you see this figure, it's pretty much the same. Uh, for his weapon, of course, he gets his bow. I mean, that's classic. Of course, you would really expect that. The ninja mask, I do like this design. Uh, it, it's, of course, the same for any of the ninja, ghost ninja. They didn't change any designs. Again, why Lego? Make unique things. Is it, That's my advice to you, Lego. Make unique villains. Just something to separate it from the other army figures. For the face, we have, I'm pretty sure, actually this figure is literally just the base model with a bow and arrow. Uh, this figure is actually a lot more interesting. Again, he has the base model for the figure, but they did some extra things. They gave him different accessories. I'm not sure about the face, we'll look at that in a second. They gave him a way different weapon. Like, you know, you get so many of those little bows and air, bow and arrows and everything. You get two of them in this set, I'm pretty sure. But this figure is, you know, just really nice. I mean, the weapon, let's go and um, get that out of his hand because we'll need to look at the figure without that but here that is it's very long so it looks like it probably spin it around or something that'd be really hard to maneuver i mean you might try to hit somebody and then accidentally hit yourself that would be painful probably or you might die i don't know they did add some shoulder pads so that's nice to get i mean they're just the they're just the normal shoulder pads i think we've got them for some sons of garmadon sets maybe pretty useful to really bulk up a character you know then he has woo's hat that he uh, colored purple um yeah, I don't know how Wu feels about that, but that's what happened, definitely. He didn't just get his own hat from somewhere. For his face, we have just an identical one to this figure right here, but you know, it works. I mean, I, I really wish they were a little bit different just to, sorry, I just, that was the sound of me dropping the other figure. I just wish that they would have given them more personality. And that actually does it for the figure. These ghosts are very easy to review, honestly. Uh, this is the most interesting minifigure in this set. Maybe besides Zane, I don't know. This figure is really detailed. It's from season three, I believe it was. And uh, they did really good on this. It's a different figure than what was there. This one has blue in it. I don't, don't think the other one was. Here's a comparison, just in case I'm wrong or just in case, I mean, if I'm right, then we'll do a comparison as well. The mask is of course that dual molded piece that they've had for a little bit now. And uh, then they put some a blue visor with gold around the rest of it. That's incredible. I love that. Uh, for his weapons on his back, he has two swords and a little holster. Like these are more shoulder pads. Again, those bulk up the figure a lot. I don't think he had these in the show, but that's cool. I mean, you get two of those. He can hold those, of course. Coming in at the torso here, we have a blue interweaven with gold. We have uh, some nice strap printing. Let's actually move his arms down here. With the leg printing, we have uh, a little bit of brown mixed into there. I don't know, those actually almost look like bow ties for some reason to me. And taking the shoulder pad off, we have a little symbol right there that probably says J or has the letter J or something. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know what that symbol means. Uh, I believe there's a decoder, but I'm a little bit too lazy to do that right now. And uh, yeah, I really like the entire design for this minifigure, how they didn't just go with a pure gold aesthetic. Oh, and I also did almost forget to mention that Jay actually comes with a little stand for him. Uh, the figure goes on just like that. So there's what that looks like. The stand looks really good. It's the 10 years of Ninjago. So that's that's incredible how long Ninjago has been going. Uh, yeah, the stand's very simple, but I do like that print. That's really nice. And I actually still have Zane in here, so we have to get him out real quick. Oh, whoops, just broke it. 
And for the main character, which is of course Zane right here, uh, he rides the mech and everything. Uh, probably up there with Golden J, honestly. This is incredible work, Lego. Thank you. Just keep making figures that resemble the other figures, but with updated prints, with updated style. They have a little black bandana going through here. Ah, oh, just so good. Thank you for this figure, Lego. I will treasure it always. Uh, with his face, of course, we have his regular, just grunt, sort of upset face, which I think works well. I mean, there's no need for really anything else. Uh, for his torso printing, of course, we have really good work there. It looks a lot like what it did in the actual show. Also, he has those bow ties at the bottom. What is that? Why did they do that? I'm a little bit confused by that, but that's fine. For his weapon, he comes with a bow, and that looks really good. I mean, it's just the regular bow piece. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what would be different about that. There isn't anything. And he also also comes with a sword. Both of those can actually be stored on the back of his mech, as you possibly saw in the clip before, or you're seeing now. Either way, you're seeing it, so that's cool. Yeah. Oh no. And taking off everything, you can see the back, which it looks like he has a picture of a cat right there. I didn't even notice that before because I, it's so cool. When I look at this through the camera, I see things that I just did not notice before, and that's cool. It's even reflective a little bit. If you turn it to the side, you can see it in just a different light. That is so cool. Kind of was a little bit more gold than silver when you put it in a little bit different of light. Uh, yeah, that pretty much does it for this figure. I really like it. Ah, so crisp, so nice. More zoom, more, more. I'm too far away to even really review this now. <laughs> Gotta figure out a way to... Okay, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna have to talk about it from here. I'm not even close enough to my table. I need a wider angle lens, honestly. I mean, look at this. I'm in my chair right now and I can't reach it quite. So uh, I just wanna talk about the overall form factor of this. Uh, just as an entire mech itself, it looks great. Uh, the stature is really well done. I do have it set up a little bit weird, maybe. You can get it to stand a lot straighter and taller, so uh, just a lot of posability, which we'll get into. First, I did want to compare it to a lot of other mechs that we have. So starting off with the Hulkbuster right here, uh, the weird flat-headed one, we have a big difference. This thing is massive compared to it. That dwarfs it so bad. Next, we have a Ninjago mech, and it, this is also quite dwarfed. I mean, this thing is huge. The ATST, of course, uh, is pretty sizable actually compared to it, but it doesn't quite reach to the top of it. This is actually my second favorite thing that I want to compare this to because these are so similarly built. The structure and posture of them are different, but they're very, very similar in size. The only thing that makes this one shorter is that the knees are permanently bent, which I don't get. Lego, why did you do that? <laughs> I mean, it looks fine, but it kind of looks like a goat or something. This one actually, hold on, I had to zoom out for a second. I had to pause so I could zoom out because this one's actually really wide. Like, as far as width goes, and I think even height because of the signs back there, this one does dwarf it like quite a bit. But if they were to go head to head, I think they could still fight. Now for my favorite mech that I wanted to compare with this. Kai's Fire Mech. Now, uh, this looks pretty similar in size. It's already a little bit taller with the shoulders until you really look at the height of that flag. I mean, with the flag up there, it literally just dwarfs it because of that. As you can see, the height difference is pretty substantial there. We have to actually keep the flags pretty far down just because it's so tall. Uh, when we put it up on our shelf. Okay, so now that this thing's went up against some of the best of the best mechs, let's go and look at all of the details and see how it measures up as far as displayability and uh, just detail ability, de detail, detailment, I don't know. I don't know what the right word for that is. All the details, let's just look at all the details. So range of motion, starting at the feet right here, we have a pretty good bit of motion. I mean, you can twist them side to side. You can do like that. Of course, both of those are the same. You can go back and forth with them. Uh, I'm not sure how much you could use that, but you can get it slightly leaned back a little bit. And actually it's even still standing right now. It looks, oh wow, it almost fell. Whew, that was close. We almost got a disaster call on video. For the leg posability, which I'm actually really excited to get into because as I was building it, I really got to see the leg posability. There's movable knees. Lego, thank you. <sighs> I can finally breathe. I've been holding my breath this entire time, just waiting for knees to be able to bend. Look at the poses you can get. I mean, look at that. Yes. For the detail of the legs, we have a decent detail. We have a sticker right here and my autofocus is failing. 
Uh, we have a little flap right here that reveals a little booster, which is very nicely built up. I like that a lot. You can even move it out a little bit. Maybe that's what that's for. Maybe you move it out a little bit and he can fly. I'm not sure. Here's what the knee function looks like. It's actually really well built. If you get this set, uh, honestly, if you want to get this set, I would, I mean, even if you don't like the set, just get it for the knees. I mean, <laughs> that's the best part of the set, honestly. And uh, for all the other detail that's really good, very well armored up and everything. Coming up a little bit, we have some more armor. We have these little flaps right here that are just, you know, ball jointed own and that lets them go at an angle. So it really does work well. At the back right here, like I was showing you before, and these are actually out of place, we actually have a place to hold some weapons. So we can hold uh, both of Zane's weapons. So, oh no, oh, it almost fell. Okay, that is a problem with the knees maybe. I think it's mostly just the feet posability is a little too much. The knees are really perfect, but. And I'm kind of scared I'm gonna drop it. So I'm not even gonna try and put the bow in there, but of course we can. And my autofocus is falling yeah, but we can put a bow on the other one if you want to, you know, that works. We have two arms on this thing and they're actually built differently than each other to a certain degree because they have different weapons. On this one, we have a sword weapon so we can come up and, you know, slash down or block another thing. It cannot rotate side to side, but it can go up and down, which is nice. You can do some curls or something. we got some ratchet joints right here so it can go like that. Uh, pretty good detail. You can go side to side like this. So if he does want to floss, then he can also do that. Uh, never mind, can't floss. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> the hands do have a pretty good bit, and I just shot off a spring loaded shooter. We do have a pretty good hand build. I'm just now noticing there's a red piece right there. That's an eyesore, but other than that, the hand's pretty good. You can open it and close it. You can get it into a little bit of a fist position for punching. Not too much since it can't actually, you know, like in real life, your fist would bend over like this. So you can't really do that well with this because they're hard plastic instead of fleshy like this, but other than that, yeah, they, the hands look really good. Up at the shoulders, we have some shoulder pads. Those move back and forth. They do that so that when you move the shoulder, it actually the shoulder pad will go up, but then you ha do have to manually do it when it goes back down or else his whole shoulder falls off partly and is just hanging there, which looks disgusting. So please do not let that happen. That would be weird. Don't let that happen in any setup ever. You will be roasted by somebody. I don't know who. Somebody will pop up in your room and roast you probably. And for the other arm, the only difference is this saw blade right here, which you can just spin and, you know, saw off a piece of somebody else's armor if you're having a little mech battle. And I am losing my voice a little bit. So if I'm get, being a little bit more quiet, that's because my voice is going out. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm noticing quite a bit of gold through here including an entire gold spine. So this guy has real spine here. <laughs> we do also have two spring-loaded shooters. So if I bring this to the side, you just launch that off and that just fell onto a shelf. That was lucky, I found it. Yay! Woo, there we go. And those can actually be moved up and down so you can aim them to a certain degree. Oh, I just shot it off again. Yay! The head has a pretty good bit of posability. The shaping is good. Uh, it looks more like the, you know, Ninjago style, the Chinese Japanese, you know, influence here with the piece right there. Looks really good. Uh, the shaping is done with these two fin pieces. Without them, they, it looks weird. And I just broke it, great. And he does have a little antenna right up here. Uh, probably for communication, for getting his Xbox games or something. I'm sure Zane has an Xbox in here. Zane told me not to say anything. Uh, yeah, I really like this. And then to open it, it will just literally open up like that. The little neck piece right here actually goes up and down. So that's cool. For the interior, we have two golden controls. I'm sorry that you can't see in there that well. There's no other way to get in there. We have a leather seat. And then to get Zane in there, it's pretty simple. It works really well, even with his little back piece. Uh, he can be with that in there. Not sure with the sword. I don't have that in there. Probably not. That's probably why they included the clip because you probably can't do that. I'm not entirely sure though. And then you would just close the thing up and he'd be in there. So there's what it looks like with him in there. So you can actually see his face still because it's not, uh, you know, like a robot, it's a mech. So a character does go in there. 